Correct. All right, so Laura, you had brought this up to us originally about whether or not her credibility will be something that can be questioned. Talk to us about what you saw in this clip and how you would kind of address that potentially to a jury or to anyone else. Well, I mean, this is what the defense attorney did was great. I mean, he's cross-examining her and he got her to admit that she lied and she, you know, admitted it, which was the best way to handle it from her perspective. Uh, but it, if you're arguing this to a jury, this goes beyond just a credibility issue. This woman clearly can lie and can lie well. She lied to the police. And not only did she lie, she waited at least 10 to 12 days before she decided to go to the police and say, hey, I lied. So it wasn't just a lie and then she regrets it right away and then changes her mind and says, let me tell you the truth. I'm, I'm sorry, I was lying to you. This, this woman sat on this for days and days and days while the entire world and, uh, and the law enforcement are searching for these kids. I mean, it's not just a minor fib. It, it, it's a huge lie. These kids are missing and she's pretending that they're with her um and, and so so then you've got this issue that she can lie with a straight face and she can even lie to law enforcement and she can wait days and days before she comes clean number two other than portraying her as this liar someone that you can't rely on and she could lie to you with a straight face you may never know when she's lying or telling you the truth the other issue is you know she her freedom is at, at stake she's worried at this point because Everybody's looking for these kids. Law enforcement's all over the place. FBI is involved. Different law enforcement agencies that are involved. Now she's worried. Oh, my goodness. What if they think I had something to do with this? She's desperate. And I think that's why she goes to the cops. So this is somebody who's worried about being filed on herself, not just for the lie, probably for the lie itself, for delaying the investigation, obstructing it. Obviously, there's all sorts of crimes and charges they can come at her with, correct? So she's worried now about that, and she's probably also worried about them tying her into the disappearance of these kids or potentially their their murders. Uh, so she would be willing to do anything at this point to get herself, extricate herself completely out of it. We even saw a little hint there. There were some questions by defense counsel, and I think uh, there were some objections, and uh, these objections were sustained about something about some kind of hearsay evidence that, was, that defense counsel was trying to bring in about her son, who's also autistic, having told the police that he had seen J.J. during this time, and, and the prosecution did everything in their power for that not to come in. And she didn't answer the question. So there's that issue, too. Oh, my goodness, her son is basically placing J.J. with her. So she was trying to keep herself as far away from all of it. And remember, she testified saying, I wanted to push this back forward. Lori, not me. She was. She did say the child was with her, but he also. But she also told the police, uh, Detective Gilbert or Officer Gilbert, that the child was back with his mother. So uh, I mean, this woman's got all sorts of issues. Uh, we know she was close to both of these individuals, extremely close to Lori Vallow. Now she's trying to distance herself as much as possible from both of them because she knows that they're toxic. Last thing she wants to do is say, or anyone to suspect that she was in on it, she was involved in any way. Yeah, and the, the defense and then, attorney... Of course, she was... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, Leah, and just give me a moment to throw to this one clip real quick. And the defense attorney, I think, kind of got a whiff of what you're talking about because as listen to his question when he was, when he was cross-examining her about whether or not she took a deal to testify. Let's take a quick listen. And at any time, did you have a face-to-face -face, uh, uh, meeting with anybody from the Rexburg Police Department? Uh, not until just a few months ago when they came down to speak to me. Okay. And who came down to speak with you? Um, Detective Ball and Detective... Hermosillo and Rob Woods. Right. So at that point, do you recall what that date of that meeting was? I believe it was in June. Okay. 
but I can't recall the date. Okay. And again, that meeting, uh, Officer Hermosillo was present? Correct. Uh, did Officer Hermosillo say that he was recording that conversation? I do not know. Did he ever, do you recall whether he told you that? I can't recall. Did Lieutenant Ball say he was recording the conversation? I cannot recall. Okay. Mr. Wood was present for a discussion with you in June as well because he was present for that meeting. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Did they, then the topic of discussion was Lori Vallow? It was everybody. Okay. And everybody meaning Lori Vallow, correct? Correct. Chad Daybell? Correct. Alex Cox? Correct. Was there also a discussion about uh, potential difficulties you might have as a result of lying to the Gilbert Police Department? No. There was never any reference or any offer of any um, deal to testify about anything and, and they would forego going after you for lying to a police officer? No. And you've never been offered anything by anyone in regards to uh, the fact that you lied about uh, or at least you, you Objection asked and answered. Mr. Pryor? I judge it's a different question. It's a I, slightly different question. I'll allow you to ask the question. So again, Mr. Wood has never specifically offered you any deal to testify in any manner in this case. Is that correct? Never. Okay. <clears throat> now you um, listened to the tape recording that you recorded. Uh, and that was in, uh, what was that, November, was that December of uh, last year, is that correct, that tape recording? The one, the 21 minute record with Lori? Yeah, December 8th. Okay. You remember the date? I did. Okay. Were you prompted by law enforcement to, uh, to make that phone call? Nope. You did that on your own? Yep. And the questions you asked were questions that you uh, planned ahead of time to ask Lori about what was going on, correct? Correct. And you, you plan this as a means of trying to gain some information uh, uh, to somehow uh, either clarify things for you, correct? Partially correct. I had many objectives in that, and that okay. was one of them, Okay. to show my innocence. Okay, and one of the other objectives, and we'll talk about that, is to impress upon the police that you did nothing wrong. Is that correct? Correct. And you needed to prove to the police that you were innocent of, of no wrongdoing. Is that correct? That wasn't my full objective. But it was one of the objectives, wasn't it? Yes. Okay. Now, I, I took the liberty of listening to that tape a number of times, and I found something quite interesting, is that uh, Lori Vallow said on the tape that she would not um, tell anything to Al. When she said she would not tell anything to Al, who, which, who's the Al she's talking about? Her brother. That would be Alex Cox? Correct. And she also talked about not telling you anything as well, correct? Correct. And you two were more than close friends. You were almost sisters with Lori Vallow, weren't you? We were really close. Well, were you almost sisters? Would you describe it as that close? Um, possibly. Okay. Is there a reason why you're not saying yes? Well, it's just a big word to say you're sisters with somebody. I haven't known her for very long, so it's only right. been a few months. Okay. But you knew her long enough to make that phone call to try to get her to help you clear your name, right? Partially. Okay. Now, this seems more and more interesting. Laura, as I'm, as I'm listening to this testimony, maybe it's the, the public defender in me, maybe because we practice differently in Brooklyn, uh, but I would suspect that this person would have, Ms. Gibbs would have a defense attorney because she's really incriminating herself left, right, and center. And if the prosecution didn't give her some sort of deal to say, hey, if you testify in this preliminary hearing or maybe subsequent um, hearings or trials, we won't prosecute you for this, that seems very strange to me and could kind of go towards her motives as to why she's testifying. What do you think? Exactly. I mean, it almost doesn't matter what her answer is to the question, have they offered you a deal? We all know she's testifying, and there are no charges against her. I mean, the proof is right there. Uh, it could be just a tacit agreement. It could be one of those situations where there's an understanding without, you know, clear, you know, directly stating it. Again, she's testifying. She's admitting to lie to, to her lies. She's not even flinching when she's admitting. Correct, correct. She says it comfortably, without worrying. She's not nervous about it because she already knows they're not coming after her. Uh, it's pretty clear. Uh, so again, it, it almost didn't matter to me what her answer was. It's just putting that idea out there 
that this woman is doing this to save her own skin. Um, and clearly she is getting away with a lie. She lied to the cops and no one's doing anything about it. Yeah, it's, and it's going to be interesting to see how this defense attorney takes that fact and kind of spins it in a way, or maybe spins, maybe not the, the right word, spin obviously has like a connotation of like lying or manipulating, but presents it in a, in a way, let's say instead, uh, to the jury to kind of get to your point, because she's not free falling without a parachute. She definitely knows exactly what she's doing and how she'll be able to get out right. on the other end unscathed. Um, the question I guess becomes is, is that enough of a seed uh, that they can plant to try to grow into something to, to discredit her and maybe this call that she made. I'm not sure, but we're gonna take a quick break and come back with more um, legal analysis on the Chad Dable preliminary hearing after this break.